This video is going to be about these crazy things the uh, statisticians call random variables. We're going to start by mentioning up front that random variables do not follow what the name implies. We're then going to give three examples, and hopefully the examples will be uh, really what drives the lecture here. But as we will learn, the name is meaningful. So even if the name is somewhat inaccurate, it is still meaningful in important ways for statisticians. Then at the end, we'll conclude with some notes, um, basically just kind of on notation. So not what the name implies. Okay, let's go like this. Random variables are one, not random. That seems crazy. Why are they called random variables then? Instead, they are deterministic. which essentially just means not random. Two, random variables are not variables. Well, if they're not random and they're not variables, what is this name all about? Instead, they are functions. If you haven't had enough functions in your life, here is just some more. But, these functions, I think, are going to be meaningful based on the examples we give. So, okay, capital X is going to be the name of a function. I know you don't often think of functions being named by the letter X, but that's the way random variables go. That is the capital letter omega in the Greek alphabet. So x, the random variable, is a function from this crazy set omega, which I have not described yet, to the um, sample space. Now I think if you imagine a coin, let's write all of that out. then this idea is going to make a lot more sense to us. For a coin, there's only two values that can show up, heads or tails. We'll call that set omega. And I've trained you all to think about uh, the sample space of a coin to be one or zero. But technically what's happening is there is a random variable named capital X that takes us from heads to one. And X takes us from tails to zero. And now we think of X as a random variable, but all it's really doing is mapping us from whatever the actual process is in the real world to numbers. And I've already trained you all to think about the Bernoulli distribution in terms of numbers. So we've kind of ignored the random variable part for a long time in this class because I think the mathematical notation of expectation and uh, density functions and whatnot is much more clear when you get the strict mathematical notation. After this video, we'll start introducing notation using random variables. But I think we need to keep in mind that they are A, not random. Look, H always goes to 1, and T always goes to 0. And they're not variables. Technically, they're functions that take you from one set to another set. It just happens to be that all our density functions and distributions in the world of statistics are defined on numbers. So we need something that connects us from possibly names and labels to numbers and random variables are the trick. So let's look at another example.
consider the set omega to consist of A, E, I, O, and U. And the sample space to consist of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now the way I drew this is I mean to say that the random variable x just maps straight down from element to element. That is a gets mapped to 1, and e gets mapped to 2, and dot, 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 but I didn't want to write them all out, so I did it this way. Now, what you are to imagine here is if you wanted to assign uniform density to all of the elements of omega, you would first map them to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then you'd put a uniform discrete distribution on the sample space S. Okay, let's say that one more time. If you wanted to assign uniform density to each of the elements of omega, theoretically what you would do is first map each element of omega to f using a random variable, that is a function, that takes each element of omega and assigns it to exactly one element in the sample space s, and then you'd assign a uniform discrete distribution to the elements of the sample space S. And that would effectively give you one-fifth probability for each element in omega. And thus you'd have a uniform discrete distribution on the elements of omega via a random variable. Okay, let's try another example. If you had omega equal to numbers, then you could have a sample space, one, two, and three. And the same story goes. If you wanted to assign a discrete uniform distribution to the elements of omega, what you'd theoretically be doing is first mapping each element of omega to exactly one element of S. And then you'd apply a discrete uniform distribution to the elements of S. And that would effectively give you a discrete uniform distribution on the elements of omega, which you could reasonably assume to be one third, but it's not obvious how you'd get one third out of the elements here. It is obvious how you could get one third out of the elements here. The discrete uniform distribution would essentially just look like this. And you'd get one third density for each element in omega. Okay, so those were my examples and hopefully that is really what convinces you about what random variables are. So we'll next move on to, but the name is meaningful. Why? Well, statisticians go like this. Ignore the arguments. And imagine only the values necessary for the distribution. So if you had a coin, then you could think x1. Now, I'm just going to enumerate my observations by x, um, by the subscripts. If you had x1 and you didn't give an argument to that, and you said the first coin flip you uh, had was the, was, uh, the observation 1. That is what we've been thinking of as heads the whole time. And you went about flipping a coin again, and the second coin flip, you got a zero. Notice how I'm ignoring the arguments to the function x. And on your third coin flip, you saw a one. And on your fourth coin flip, you saw a one again. Okay, maybe. Well, by ignoring the arguments and only considering the values the distribution needs, a coin is essentially a Bernoulli distribution, the values it needs are ones and zeros then you can think of each x as a variable. This notation indeed makes you think x is a variable. 
Now, the second piece of this is acknowledge the fact that before flipping again, you don't know the next observation. That is, x5, before you flip, you can't tell me if it's going to be a 0 or a 1, which is to say the, now think of it as a variable, x5 is random. So in fact, this is what gives us the sense of random variables as a variable, and this is what gives us the sense of randomness to these crazy non-random functions. So the name is meaningful if you consider it in some sort of notation where you ignore the argument and you accept that until you flip again, you don't know what the next observation is going to be. And in that sense, this is like a random variable. So let's try some notes then. Random variables often denoted by capital letters. So that is capital X, capital Y, capital Z. And if I ever need to make it clear that these are capital letters, I will put serifs on them. Okay. The values random variables can take on are denoted by lowercase letters. That is x, y, and z. Now, this is a little confusing at first, so I'm really trying to make some bold points here. Capital letters are random variables. That is, x could represent a Bernoulli distribution, and until you flip the coin, you don't know what value, one or zero, x might take on. And if y was a binomial distribution, was representing a binomial distribution, until you observe all k trials of the underlying Bernoullis and then add them up, you don't know what values 0 through k y might take on. So we often think of, let's just do this, random variables. Um, as following specific distributions. So we would write x distributed uniform 1 to 6. And that might represent a fair die. Okay, I'm going to use a semicolon to separate out the next random variable, y tilde Bernoulli p, which would say y can only take on ones or zeros, and it takes on the value 1 with probability p. So we may not know what p is ahead of time. In this case, this could be a possibly unfair coin represented by the random variable, capital Y. And in LaTeX, you can get this tilde by slash sim. And you might have another one, z, follows a normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance, sigma squared. We'll talk about variance soon. I'm just giving us another example of how this notation might look. So hopefully this was a reasonable introduction to random variables. 
Random variables as a name is meaningful, though it's not exactly what the name implies. And hopefully this got us a better understanding of the value of random variables.